I'm not sure if you heard, but two weeks ago, a little game called Baldur's Gate 3 came out, the video game adaptation of the popular tabletop game Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I'll be honest, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, and I don't really know a whole lot about how the game works, but this Baldur's Gate 3 thing was getting a lot of great reviews, so I figured I'd pick it up and see what all the fuss was about. And you know what? The exploration is pretty fun. Once I figured out that you can use a controller instead of this point and click nonsense, I love tactics games, so the combat was right up my alley. The RPG progression of stats and abilities is cool and, wait a minute, is that an ad class button? Okay, yeah, whenever I'm playing some type of RPG that lets you cross class or experiment with weird builds and stuff, I am all over that. So of course, instead of actually playing the game like a normal person, I spent like three hours researching all the class and subclass abilities to find the most weird and broken multi-class combinations that I want to try out. So today, I present to you six weird and broken multi-classes in Baldur's Gate 3 that I want to try out. I already said that. But bear in mind that I'm only like three hours into the actual game, so there's probably loads more combinations that I haven't even thought of yet. And also, I don't have any gameplay footage of these multi-classes in action, because again, I haven't gotten to try any of them yet, but I'm sure that my assistant Richard will come up with something super interesting to show off these different combos on screen, right? Right? You look, man, you do not look confident, but I, you'll think of something. All right, Richard, hit that intro. Has this ever happened to you? Aw oh, man, a story in the road keeps getting his ass beat. I wish he was better at taking hits when he gets up close without sacrificing his damage output. Well, wish no more, because with the new Rogue Barbarian multiclass, you can have all that and more. Really? Sure. At level one, Barbarians get the ability to rage as a bonus action. While in a rage, you gain resistance to all bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage, which are the three most common types of damage in the game. Take the Wild Heart Bear subclass at level 3, and you get resistance to all damage, except Psychic. But that's not all. At level 5, rogues get an ability called Uncanny Dodge, which lets them reduce the damage of a single attack by half again, meaning you're taking a quarter as much damage from any single big attack a turn. Wow, looks like Astorian won't be getting his ass beat anymore. He sure won't. But that's not all. Raging also gives you a bonus to damage on all your attacks. In regular D&D, this only worked with strength-based weapons. But here in Baldur's Gate 3, that requirement is gone, and you can rage with all the roguish dex weapons you want. Just get three levels in rogue and take the Thief subclass to get access to a second bonus action, and five levels in Barbarian to get access to extra attacks. Attack. Grab two daggers, and suddenly you're making four attacks a turn, two attacks as your action with extra attack, and two more with your offhand attacks as your bonus actions, all of which deal an additional four damage due to rage. Wow, that's amazing! But is that all? Yep, yeah, that's all. Oh, uh, okay, well, I mean, that's still, that's still pretty cool. Just kidding! That's not all! What?! The signature feature of the rogue is sneak attack, where you can deal a boatload of extra damage if your target is adjacent to one of your allies, or if you have advantage on the attack. Man, that sounds complicated. Well, don't worry, because with the barbarian feature reckless attack that you get at just level two, you can toss all those complicated requirements out the window. Just activate reckless attack at the start of all your turns, and suddenly all your attacks are at advantage, and you can get that juicy sneak attack damage any time of the day or night. Sure, all your opponents will have advantage on you in return, but that doesn't matter when you're eating all their attacks like Cheerios. So call now and get your very own Rogue Barbarian today. I can't wait! 
Shimmer Incorporated is not responsible for any loss or stolen items that may arise from having a raging story in your party. Side effects of the Rogue Barbarian may include, but are not limited to, severe bodily harm, rash, nausea, vomiting, or in all likelihood, death. Do not use the Rogue Barbarian if you are allergic to it, if you are or plan to become pregnant, or if you have more than $5 on your person. Historian will gut you in the middle of the street like fish and take you for everything you own. Please use the Rogue Barbarian responsibly. Wait. What? All right, I can't do that bit for the whole video, but I'm sure Richard found a super cool visual presentation for that, but hey, I better not catch you slacking for the rest of the video. Wait, are you slacking already over there? Is being both an unstoppable force and an immovable object not good enough for you? Maybe you think damage is for chumps and you just want to be a, a really immovable object. Look, I didn't think this metaphor through, but it sounds like the druid barbarian is for you. We've already talked about how a raging barbarian is only taking half as much damage from most attacks, meaning it effectively has twice the amount of HP that the game says it does. So how do we make this better? Well, by giving it a crap ton more HP. I call this combo the Cocaine Bear. Just multi-class from Barbarian into Druid to get access to the Wild Shape feature, which lets you turn into various animals with their own HP values. When an animal form is killed, you revert back to your original shape with the same HP you were at before you Wild Shaped. So you effectively just gave yourself a bunch more HP. So if you Rage, then Wild Shape into a 30 hit point Bear, then you effectively have 60 extra hit points because of those resistances. Since you can wild shape two times in between each long rest, that means that you have 120 extra hit points on top of your huge HP pool that you probably have from being a barbarian. Also, you get to run up on people as an insane bear out for blood, and as you can probably tell by Richard's expert animation, that's freaking awesome! And while we're on the topic of barbarians, the next multi-class is the Bardbarian. It's a cross between, well, between a bard and a barbarian. And you're probably asking, is this any good? Look, honestly, I have no idea. I just like the name. Now, the big downside of the rage ability is that you can't cast spells while raging. Since the bard relies a lot on spells, this is... I mean, this is a pretty bad idea. Like, maybe you could take the, the swords subclass at level three for Bard to get flourishes. I mean, I haven't used Bard much yet, so I don't know how good they are, if they'd be helpful at all, but you could probably, I don't know, get some extra rage damage out of the slashing flourish. But the main thing with this combo here is that you get to call yourself the Bardbarian. I want that. Now, I have a feeling that a lot of my typical viewers probably don't play Baldur's Gate. They're mainly here for the Pokemon stuff. Well, for those people who have made it this far into the video anyway, I've got some good news for you. Just take three levels in Ranger, three levels in Cleric, and one level in Wizard, and you can become a Pokemon trainer in Baldur's Gate 3. Choose the Beastmaster subclass for Ranger at level 3 to get a companion, a basically just a big ass animal friend to fight alongside you, like another bear for instance. Take three levels in Cleric to get access to second level spells, including Spiritual Weapon, which summons well, summons a spiritual weapon, not a super creative name, that can also fight for you. Then just take one level in Wizard to get access to Find Familiar and summon a third animal companion and suddenly you've got an Ursa Ring, a Hone Edge, and a Murkrow ready to go. Now these summons will vary in usefulness in a battle, but remember, any attack targeting one of your summons is an attack that doesn't target you. Just send those summons to the front lines and let them soak up damage while your actual party members snipe away with rage attacks from the back. Do you want to be a master? Pokemon, do you have the skills to be number one? <laughs> You want to learn a real combo? Well, then I've got just the move for you. It's called the Subscriber Pile Driver. All you gotta do is give that subscribe button a click or a tap, and it will change to a different color. I'll be honest, I, mean, I think that's probably all it'll do for you. It, it's got nothing to do with what YouTube recommends to you. It, nobody really checks the subscriber like tab, but uh, 
don't know if you could tell, I like watching numbers get big. So here, I'll show you how the combo's done. Oh, have all these multi-classes been a little too useful for you? Do you want to stop thinking about what you should do and start thinking about what you could do? We've looked at pushing damage and defense to the max, but what if you just want to move? as far as possible in a single turn. I call this next multi-class Schmovin. Choose any tall character who has a base movement speed of nine meters per turn. Take two levels in Monk to get unarmored movement, which increases your base movement by three meters if you aren't wearing armor. Five levels in Barbarian gets you fast movement for an extra five meters, which does stack with the monk's ability in Baldur's Gate. If you choose the Elkhart subclass for Barbarian, you get an additional 4.5 meters of movement for a total of 21.5 meters per movement action, or just over 70 feet, because the metric system can suck it. If you take two levels in Fighter to get Action Surge, and three levels in Rogue to get the Thief's second bonus action, plus the Rogue ability Cunning Action, then you can move with your regular movement, move again by taking the Dash action, Action Surge to Dash again, then two more dashes with your bonus actions for a total of five movement actions. That means that with this build, you could theoretically move 107.5 meters or 352.5 feet in a single round. Apparently, a single round in this game is supposed to take six real world seconds, meaning that a character with this build could be running at speeds of 17.916 meters per second or just over 40 miles an hour. Talk about schmovin'. Granted, um, most of the battle arenas in this game aren't nearly that big, so I don't know how, I mean, I don't know how actually useful this would be. But you're still schmovin'. Man, I can just imagine Richard's expertly crafted animations right now. I mean, look at, look at that guy schmove. And last but not least, I chose Sorcerer as my starting class in the game, so I think it's only fitting that I break that class too. This one is the most involved combo on here that's actually practical, but I think you'll agree with me that it'll pay off big time. I call it Eldritch B -b 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 Blast. You'll need one level in Warlock to get access to the spell Eldritch Blast. This is a cantrip, so you don't need a spell slot to cast it, but it lets you shoot a beam at someone that does pretty good damage. When your overall character level reaches 11, you can shoot three beams at once, targeting the same creature or different ones, your choice. If you take a second level in Warlock, you can get the Agonizing Blast Invocation, which just makes each Eldritch Blast pack a bit more of a punch. For your subclass, choose the Great Old One, uh, you'll see why in a bit. So with a single action, you can shoot up to three blasts. If you take two levels in Fighter to get Action Surge, then you can get another action to bump that up to six. Then if you take a bunch of levels in Sorcerer, you can get Sorcery Points. If you take the Quicken Spell Meta Magic option, then you can spend three sorcery points to cast a spell that would normally take an action as a bonus action instead. I think you already know where I'm going with this. If you take three levels in Rogue and choose apparently my favorite subclass in the game, the Thief, and you have at least six sorcery points at your disposal, then you can cast Eldritch Blast two more times with each of your bonus actions for a grand total of 12 blasts, each one dealing probably around 10 damage per hit. If you choose the Great Old One as your Warlock subclass, you get a feature called Mortal Reminder which makes it so that whenever you land a critical hit on someone, that creature and anyone around them is frightened of you until the end of their next turn, meaning they can't get any closer to your squishy casters. Since Eldritch Blast has a 1 in 20 chance of being a critical hit, if you do the math, then you have a 45% chance of at least one of those blasts 
being a critical hit, mean you can mow down enemies with an eldritch pew, machine pew, gun pew, and pew, terrify pew, the ones pew, that are pew. left. Richard, if you can't find a way to make that look cool, then I swear to God you're fired. You been doing what? <laughs>